Good morning and welcome to our very first Future Focus Fridays, which is a new initiative that Ed is setting forth. We are working to expose our students to some of the different career paths that are available here in the city and throughout the world, and also to engage our community in this effort so that they can talk to real people who really live here, who are doing some really great things. So thank you so much for joining us. Our first guest is going to be Mr. Rico Harris with iPush Magazine. So first things first, um, we usually prep our students to have an elevator pitch, which is just 30 seconds where they introduce themselves, tell a little bit about their interests and provide a way for people to keep in contact with them. We like to ask you to provide your business elevator pitch that you would use for stakeholders or other people who are interested in knowing who iPush is. Okay, so my name is uh, Rico Harris. I'm the founder of iPush Magazine. Uh, we've been in business a little over five years now, and iPush is an acronym for I Possess Unlimited Skill and Hustle, and which is a belief that uh, I adopted from uh, the Bible, actually, uh, where it says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And at iPush, we basically are a full uh, service media company, and we print a quarterly magazine, it's a lifestyle magazine based here in Birmingham, and then we also provide uh, unlimited media services for businesses, for startups, whether it's photography, videography, uh, that's website design, pretty much all things media that a business would need to start up and get off to a successful start. Uh, we're based in Birmingham, and uh, we love working with new and uh, potential brands that's coming into business. I hope that was a minute. It was a little less. Yeah. That was great. I didn't know what iPush stood for, so that was awesome to, to hear the acronym there. Um, so what made you decide to go into this particular business? Was it something that you always wanted to do, or was there um, something that made you want to go in this direction? Okay. Yeah, absolutely not. It, it was never something on my mind that I always wanted to do. Uh, but I did see, I did saw at a point in time in my life that there was a need for a uh, local magazine in the Birmingham area. And I took advantage of that opportunity and I really started doing my homework and researching what it takes to create a magazine. And as I, I learned how to create a magazine, I learned about the advertising of magazine and started learning a little bit more about the city. I was actually born here, but I was raised in Atlanta. So I had to learn about the culture of Birmingham and try to incorporate that into the uh, magazine. I love it, just all that. You said y'all have been doing this for about five years? Yes. And what were you doing before? Uh, so before I actually did another magazine that uh, it, I can actually say that it never got off the ground. Uh, that was my first failed business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, uh, it was called Another Name. And that's what actually birthed I push. I had to push myself past that first hurdle and create and keep going. So before then, I was actually doing a, another magazine. I think it's great for our students to hear people who are doing what they want to do, but to hear about their failures to, that they had to go through to get to where they're at now. So um, I'm glad you shared that. Um, I wanted to ask about what your favorite and your least favorite things are about what you do every day. Uh, my favorite thing uh, as of now is that I get to interact with people. I'm always meeting new people and I get to hear their dreams and their visions. Like that's, that's one of the most amazing things that I get to do every day is, is really tap into what people are really dreaming and aspiring to do. And I guess the least favorite is that I can't help everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. That's part of the hardest thing. I mean, you you want to help people and you want to, you know, give your resources to them, but you just can't. You can only go so far and be stretched so thin with help. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, with that, too, a lot of our students are thinking about their futures and kind of looking for ways and means that they can get some help along the way. But part of that is their educational paths. Can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Because it sounds like you didn't necessarily go to school for starting a magazine, but you went to the through the school of hard knocks to get there. Can you tell us a little bit about what school was like for you? Okay. Well, I mean, uh, in high school, I, I was actually a pretty uh, good student, uh, but I had no clue what I wanted to do in life. And so I didn't concentrate on anything. And uh, college really wasn't my first choice. And 
and so I, I really didn't attend. And I began working. Uh, I worked in the coal mine for 10 years as I was building the business and uh, taking my money and investing in the business over the period of time. But during that time, I learned from that job that that wasn't what I wanted to do. And it forced me to be resourceful enough to learn from Google and YouTube, uh, start reading books. I, I, never, I wasn't a reader, really, uh, until I created a magazine. I wanted to create a successful business. So now I, I, I really enjoy reading books on marketing and advertising and branding. Uh, like I said, but before then, if I would have went to college, it, it might not have been as good because the passion wasn't there then, but like mm -hmm. the passion is now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, is there anything that you would change about your training if you were given the opportunity to go back and do it all over again? Absolutely. I, I would most definitely uh, get a degree in business, uh, probably finance. Uh, I would most definitely um, really try to get at least a math degree. Uh, can you repeat that? Last yeah, I would one? Most I would most definitely go back to school. I would get want to get a, a degree in business and finance, at least always through a at least through a master's degree. Okay. I gotcha. really because like right now, what I'm having to do is uh, what I'm having to do now is go back and learn stuff. Like I said, I have learned stuff through the school of hard knocks, a lot of bought lessons, uh, doing stuff the right way and wrong way. Then you find out later on you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. But if I had went to school, I could have skipped a little bit of that and been a lot ahead of where I'm at now. So is that kind of the advice that you would give to someone who's coming up after you to maybe go into business and then get the, the technical or the design element? Or how would you how would you suggest that someone who wanted to do what you do go about it? So for me, I would say I would give anybody advice. Um, people are passionate, people are talented, but when it's time to create a business and connect the dots and make money, it's a different world. And you need that structure, you need that knowledge to make a solid business so you can do it full time because you can be very talented in writing or designing, and but you don't you lack the business sense to actually make money and make a formulated business where you can have employees and buy a building and have trucks with your logo, all that stuff on it. You have to learn, learn something about business. So you need the business aspect of it, then your talent and your passion along with it. And so talking about the business aspect, I think we've talked to a lot of students who want to go and be entrepreneurs and they think that having a business means that you get to do whatever you want. You don't have to report to anyone and you don't have anyone telling you what to do. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you actually do and what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? My first taste of full-time entrepreneurship uh, was a shockwave because when I left my full-time job, I thought automatically I would get up at five o'clock in the morning and I would work. And I had a hard time getting out of bed because nobody, I, it was no one telling me I had to be somewhere at a certain time. Uh, I wasn't as motivated. So my first three months was really rough as an entrepreneur before I started to discipline myself and say, hey, I need to make money. I need to be on a schedule. I need to do things that's going to allow me to be successful. So now I have to be in bed early. I can't stay up late. I cut TV out pretty much completely. Uh, I have to take time to, for reading because I have to study. So being a full-time entrepreneur is, is the same to me when I was a full-time employee. I work uh, every bit of six days a week, uh, anywhere from eight to 10 hours a day. And I put forth the same effort I did in my full-time job. Wow, yeah, that's real because that's the other thing, like getting to do what I want to do means that I have freedom to sleep in. I can, you know, kind of lollygag around and not really take it as seriously, I don't think, as they realize you're going to have to take it. Um, so you said that you put yourself on a schedule. Can you tell us a little bit about what a day in your life actually looks like? So, so for me, a day in my life is, is I get up and I come to my uh, studio, which also has my office in it. And I begin my day with pretty much uh, emails. Uh, we have scheduled photo shoots and video shoots. And we have a, uh, a team that we meet uh, once a week and we work on designing the magazine. So my, my days are pretty much um, very scheduled. I really, have any, I really have any days where I'm just... I don't know what to do. I don't, my days are pretty much planned out a week ahead of time, actually. So I'm constantly always uh, 
build into a computer or notes or in a meeting or photo shoots or video shoots. What about employees? Do y'all have a lot of people on staff? So yes, we do we do have staff, but people are that work for our contractors, meaning they they do this on the side or we employ them for specific jobs. And then we also have interns that's in college as well. But most of the people that work uh, with us, uh, this is a side hobby for them or this is a passion. And then some of them do it full time, but we, we mainly use contractors right now. Okay, cool. Um, so now <clears throat> we're gonna go for the real deal what the kids are always asking us about. Um, what is the money like? When it's when the business is good, when the business is not so good, what can you tell us about that? So the money is like whatever you make it. So you have to make the money situation work for you. Of course, when I first uh, quit my full time job and started doing entrepreneurship full time, the money was not the same. Uh, I cannot go out to eat every day because I have all day to eat lunch. So I started to bring my lunch. So I, you have to learn how to uh, cut back so you can save your money. Uh, it's important as an entrepreneur to balance uh, your bills then what you need with your business money and being able to separate the two. Uh, you should never mix all your money together. But uh, a lot of times, the amount of money we make is based off our uh, drive, it's based off our work ethic, it's based off the knowledge that we know. So. You know, we've become more successful because we're more driven driven on how to create more opportunities of revenue for us. So every entrepreneur doesn't make a lot of money. Just because the name sounds glamorous, but all entrepreneurs don't make a lot of money until they learn how to make money. Oh, yes, those revenue streams and having multiple and more than one. Um, you said that you guys have the media pack that you do for other business, and then you have your actual physical business that y'all run. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little bit about the distinction between those two streams? Okay, so if you're looking at this shirt, it says uh, Create to Live, which is a studio that I'm a co-founder of, and we basically uh, rent out space for studio for people who need studio space, and we do podcasts, engineer podcasts, and short documentaries and things like that. And that's just one stream of income that we've been able to create for ourselves. Then there's our push magazine where we basically sell advertisement. Uh, we use our social media platform to sell advertisement through social media uh, because people on social media so much and we have a large platform on social media. So we have to be real creative on what do we already have and how can we perfect it to make money with it. Love it, definitely. So <laughs> talked a little bit about the good and the, the difficulties, but speaking a little deeper into the not so great with everything going on with COVID-19, this pandemic, and then all the social unrest. How has that really affected your business having to go into quarantine and then in the middle of that, the world kind of exploded? How has that affected your business in any way? I want to be completely honest with you guys. It's really been a blessing in disguise. Um, because we are heavily in the digital world with even our magazine online and social media, uh, we've kind of already kind of set up financially to be able to, be able to um, service businesses. So when restaurants could only do curbside, we was there making commercials for them and we was there advertising their business and things like that. So we just kind of set up for that anyway. It did slow the printed magazine down but the good side of that was that we were able to regroup and kind of rebrand and say, hey, let's figure out how can we do things better. So the downtime was a, uh, a something very much needed for us because we need to kind of work on some structure. Now, the social injustice really made us think about what's going on around us and how can we be more inclusive to include everybody in what we do because we are pretty much a African-American brand, but we want to service everyone. And but. Um, the biggest thing I would tell anyone going on now, you have to be creative. You, you, I couldn't put my head down. I couldn't be sad because of quarantine and all the other things going on. I had to really maintain a level head and stay being creative and figure out how can I transform and how can I uh, transition into a better position. 
So a true entrepreneur has to be able to um, adapt to what's going on and keep moving forward. Right, absolutely. And kind of going off of that, how do you stay encouraged and motivated and keep that creativity flowing when things are so crazy right now? Um, I would say that I believe in positive thinking a lot. I mean, I really listen to uh, positive things. So I'm very much aware of what I allow to come into my, my mind. So that's positive music, positive influences. I watch on social media, uh, positive affirmations. It, it allows you to create an energy that's positive. Um, everyone gets sad. Everyone gets mad. I mean, you, you can't deny that. But you can control the amount of time that you feel sad and the amount of time you're angry. And you can replace that with positivity. Uh, of course, my family, because uh, the things I do is not just for me. It is for my family as well. So that's a bit of my motivation. And then figuring out how to stay positive and then creating a, a positive environment. Uh, I'm very much into energy. So the energy that you give out, the energy that you're allowed to come in, it can really reflect on what type of uh, day you're having. Speaking of positivity, um, I read on your website that you have a music festival coming up in September. Is that still on? What's the what's the plans for that? So uh, originally we was going to cancel it this year, but we're going to move forward with it. And we're going to focus not so much on the music uh, this year. Uh, so I push Foodie and Music Festival, but we're going to focus on voter registration. And we're going to focus on COVID awareness because we all know we're going into 2021, uh, an entire different year with COVID, and we want to make sure people are more aware of what's going on and what's to come in the fall and dealing with it in the winter. Uh, but we're going to require people wear masks. Uh, maybe you can check temperatures out there, but we're still going to be safe with it as much as possible. But we're going to reduce the, the size of the festival down, but we're still looking forward to it, though. Awesome. I can't wait. I'll be there. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that it's still it's still happening. Um, and that makes me think just about, you know, people wanting to support small business and stuff. How can how can the community support iPush? Well, as as a community, uh well, I'm I'm big on word of mouth, so I would love people to spread the word about iPush. Uh I'm not a big advocate advocate of asking people for support. I I love to earn people respect and earn their business with quality work and what we do. So the, the biggest way to support it is just really spread the word and tell people about us and then kind of allow those people, if, even if they're not going to be future clients of ours, just allow them opportunity to, to hear about us and hear the great things that we do. And then the connection will make itself some kind of way. So very true. And really, that is pretty much all we have for you today. We're going to end on one note that we like to ask all of our partners, and I believe that you've answered this before, but we want to make sure that it gets out to as many of our students as we can get it to. And that is, what is one thing that you wish someone had told you when you were in school and coming up that um, you may have missed until later on down the road? Number one thing, I hope it's going to sound cliche, but um, I would say someone would have told me to really believe in myself. Uh, I think a lot of us, when we're teens, tend to have uh, confident issues, especially in high school, coming out of high school, uh, all type of things like that where we, our confidence is still building. And sometimes our confidence is superficial, especially in high school, because it's just kind of based off friends and things like that. But I, I wish I would have believed in myself a lot more. It took a lot of years for me to have the confidence just to believe in myself and then I have the ability to do the things that I do today. So believe in yourself. Amen to that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nico Harris with iPush Magazine. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate you coming to our conferences and working with students and just bringing your light and that positive energy that you spoke about. We just love you so much. We love our push and we look forward to working with you and um, helping to support our students in the future. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So. D, D, thank you guys. Thank you. We'll see you later, Rico. Bye. A special thanks to Rico Harris for taking the time to talk with us today. We appreciate iPush's desire to give back to the community and invest in our students. We also want to give a big thanks to you 
for tuning in. We will be releasing Future Focus Friday videos every other Friday for the next couple of months. You can find them at the Birmingham Education Foundation YouTube channel. They will also be shared at our Facebook page and other social media platforms. Now stay put to see a special behind the scenes video from an iPush front cover photo shoot.